Hello, welcome to Living Life. It's an honor sharing God's Word with you today, and I hope that we could fully uh, engage in God's Word with all of our hearts. Have you ever tried running away from God? Or have you ever tried to uh, deceive God, thinking that, okay, if I do this, then God will never know. Or if I do it this way, then I could kind of bend God's will according to my will. It's a foolish thing to do. Uh, there was a period in my life where I kind of fell away from God and I, you know, I stopped going to church and I kind of did things my way. Uh, not what God wanted and uh, uh, what God had planned for me in my life, but just I did everything that I wanted to do uh, according to whatever came into my heart. I did it. I did it according to my way. But after experiencing all that, I learned that it's useless. Um, we could plan, we could do things our own way, we could try to deceive God, and we could try to bend His will into my will. And at times, God kind of allows it to happen because as a loving Father, He allows us to do certain things uh, in, our, in our freedom. But ultimately, um, God will exercise His will upon our lives and God will make the impossible happen and God will bend uh, His will according to how He ever wants it or whatever in His art. In today's text, we see King Ahab using uh, different kinds of uh, deceitfulness to bend God's will to His will. But we know that ultimately it was useless and it was in vain. So let's get into today's word and see what happens when we try to bend God's will to our will. So let's get into today's text. Second Chronicles chapter 18, verses 28 through 34. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had ordered his chariot commanders, Do not fight with anyone, small or great, except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, This is the king of Israel. So they turned to attack him, but Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. God drew them away from him, for when the chariot commanders saw that he was not the king of Israel, they stopped pursuing him. But someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the breastplate and the scale armor. The king told the chariot driver, Wheel around and get me out of the fighting. I've been wounded. All day long the battle raged, and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot, facing the Arameans until evening. Then at sunset, he died. Today's text is the conclusion of chapter 18. So what started as King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat partnering together and trying to attack uh, their neighboring country, which God wasn't for, uh, we saw in the previous uh, text how they brought upon the prophet of truth, Micaiah, and he came and he prophesied that this isn't what the Lord wanted. And in his vision, he saw the people of Israel, they were scattered without a shepherd, and he saw the true king seated on his throne, uh, ordering his angels to spread deceit among the prophets, the 400 prophets whom Ahab uh, considered so favorably because they always told him what he wanted to hear. So today is a conclusion uh, of that story. They go into war, they go to Ramath Gilead, and they attacked the neighboring country. And while at war, we see King Ahab. Uh, we know that he is concerned about what Micaiah said because he tries to use deceitfulness to trick the enemy. And he wants to kind of bend God's will to his will. And we know this because in verse 29, it says, the king of Israel, Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now, we see him using uh, ruse, uh, trickery, trying to deceive not only um, the enemy 
uh, wh whom, uh, in which they were fighting, but he's trying to deceive God as well. So he's saying, listen, I know that you used your servant Micaiah to, uh, to give this prophecy, but I'm going to bend it to my will. I know that if I use my brain, I know that if I use uh, whatever trickery that I have in my brain, I think I could escape whatever fate that I have. So in a way, he's kind of putting his friend Jehoshaphat in danger because there's supposed to be two kings, king of northern Israel, king of Judah, which is Jehoshaphat, and King Ahab himself. He didn't wear his royal robes, but he just wore either civilian clothes or he wore other military clothes to deceive the enemy because he knew that the enemy was out to get him. So he was actually putting a huge target on Jehoshaphat his friend, and he was kind of uh, trying to deceive everyone. So he does that. They go into battle. And when the enemies, they attacked King Jehoshaphat, thinking that he was the king, um, in verse 31, it says, So they turned to attack him, but Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. God drew them away from him. So we see uh, just God's grace and favor upon Jehoshaphat. If, it, if this was under normal circumstances, King Jehoshaphat, he should have been ambushed. He should have been killed because he had this huge target uh, painted upon him due to King Ahab's uh, ruse and trickery. But God saves him because Jehoshaphat, he cries out to him. And But in verse 33, it says, But someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the breastplate and the scale of armor. So we see two random things happening, which wasn't entirely, it, it wasn't a coincidence at all. One, it says that someone drew his bow randomly. So someone shot their arrow, um, and he wasn't aiming for the king, because they, no, one, uh, no one had any idea who the real king was. So he shot it randomly. And not only did he sh shot it randomly, but it happened to enter the place in between the king's armor, right in the perfect spot to hit him, which was between the breastplate and the scale armor. Now, we know, you know, when, when the world saw this happening, they might perceive it as random, uh, just a pure coincidence, and really something really unlucky for King Ahab, but we know that this was the hand of God which was moving. This was God exercising His will, uh, just as He had predict, uh, predicted, and just as King, uh, a prophet Micaiah had prophesied that this was going to happen, we see the people of Israel being scattered without a shepherd because King Ahab was about to fall. And it says, the king told the carriage driver, wheel around and get me out of fighting. I've been wounded. And verse 34, the conclusion is, all day long the battle raged and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot facing the Armenians until evening. Then at sunset, he died. King Ahab, um, in the previous text, he listen to the counsel of his unfaithful 400 prophets telling them, yes, go into battle and the Lord will deliver the enemies into your hands. And when he consulted the true prophet, the prophet of truth, Micaiah, who told him what God told him, something that he didn't want to hear, he ignored it. He went into battle. He tried everything in his willpower. He, uh, uh, cunningness, ruse, trickery, whatever deceitfulness he had in his uh, heart and in his mind. He tried everything to avoid God's fate in his life, but all that was meaningless and all that was uh, useless. We saw King Jehoshaphat, on the other hand, when he was attacked, we saw God's sovereign hand and God's grace upon him, and he was saved. Meanwhile, on the other hand, King Ahab, who was hiding amongst the other um, uh, soldiers, he was hit randomly by an arrow, and it happened to hit him where he wasn't covered, and we knew that that was the hand of God. I think the challenge for us is, no matter how hard we try to, de uh, to deceive God, no matter how hard we try to bend God's will into my will, we know that it is meaningless, uh, we know that it's useless, so let us just have the faith, um, even though it may seem that God is leading us into a different path that I don't want, uh, even though it may seem that God is leading us into a path where there seems to be no way, we know that God is faithful and we know that His grace and His sovereign hands will be upon us. Let's go into time of prayer. We can try as hard as we want to hide from God. 
but he will find us. We can try as hard as we want to run away from God, but he will make us turn around. And that's what happened to Jonah. Jonah, he bought a boat ticket, which was the furthest point during that time, the furthest point away from Nineveh, where God wanted him to go. But while Jonah was escaping, God sent a storm and uh, Jonah was kind of forced to plunge into the ocean, swallowed up by fish, stay there th uh, for three days. The fish spat him out, and then he eventually made a long and hard U-turn back to Nineveh where God wanted Jonah to be. Um, I pray that in our lives that, uh, that we may recognize God's will and God's plan for us, uh, even though it may be the opposite of what I want, although it may be the opposite of what I really wanted in my heart, uh, and although it may seem like a road of hardship, we know that God's sovereign hand is in it. And even in the face of uh, enemies, even though we're surrounded, when Jehoshaphat cried unto the Lord, Lord delivered him from his enemies. And meanwhile, King Ahab, he was using uh, all this deceitfulness to hide and turn away from God's will, but a random arrow struck him right between the place where he wasn't covered and he ended up dying. So may we have faith and may we trust in God's plans and will for us in our lives. Let's go into time of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the word you have given us today. Um, we know that King Ahab, he ignored uh, your warnings. Uh, he ignored the truth that was proclaimed unto him. And he himself, he tried everything in his power, everything in his um, head to uh, avoid God's uh, prophecy into his life. But we know that it's meaningless and we know that it's useless. So I pray that we may have the boldness, that we may have the wisdom to accept your will and your plans that you have uh, laid out for us in our lives. And even though it may lead us into a path of difficulty, even though we may be surrounded by enemies, we know that you will deliver us because you are our shepherd and you are our king. We thank you, we love you, and in your precious name we pray. Amen.